Hey! So, I just finished editing the video you guys are about to watch, and I felt like I had to put a little thing before it. Uh, so, skip to the time that is currently on the bottom of the screen if you don't want to hear me talk before you go to a video where I'm talking. But, essentially, I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, if you follow my Instagram or if you're in my Discord server, that Luna um, passed away last week, exactly one week as of when I am saying these words right now. And that is the day after um, I filmed the video that you guys are about to watch. Now, if you paid attention to the description of the video I posted before this or the Instagram post I made promoting it, you'll see that I mentioned that that was the last video that Luna was in. And that's a lie. Uh, the reason that I said that was going to be the last video that Luna was in was because when Luna passed away, I had already edited most of that video. So although she is in the video, I didn't really have to spend very much time looking at her because I had already edited it, so it was just putting in the minor things that I had to do. Meanwhile, I had this video, which I hadn't edited at all. I hadn't touched it. The footage was all still raw. I hadn't even uploaded it to Premiere Pro yet. And so I just assumed I wasn't going to edit it because I didn't know if I would be emotionally able to handle watching a video that Luna is very heavily featured in. In this video, she's a pretty major part of it. She's pretty much always in the background or doing one of her stupid uh, comments or I have her doing a stupid long over dramatic monologue of nothingness. Where was I going with that? Yeah, I just, I thought at the time that it was going to be too painful for me to look back on myself with Luna the day before she died, not knowing that that was the last day that I was going to spend with her because, you know, definitely didn't predict her suddenly passing away. Luna died in a pretty sudden way. She had a blockage. Luna's case wasn't something I was able to catch and perform blockage protocol on because she went from being pretty much fine to being rushed to the emergency vet so quickly that I just, I didn't even know what was wrong with her. Um, she spent the entire day at the vet getting tests done x-rays, they did a barium, and the vet found that her stomach was blocked with, by something. So uh, right then and there, we didn't waste any time. We went into surgery. And what the vet pulled from her was two large hairballs and a piece of black rubber. So she got through the surgery. She was completely fine. They stitched her up really well, and she spent the night at the vet being monitored, and she spent the following day at the vet being monitored. And unfortunately, um, halfway through the afternoon, the day after her surgery, she started to make a really bad turn and um, she caught a fever and um, her lungs started to fill with fluid. And the vet told me that we could either put her through a second surgery, which might not solve the problem and she likely wouldn't have survived, or um, we could euthanize her. She'd been in a lot of pain for the last 24 hours, and I made the choice that we should just euthanize her because she just wasn't fighting anymore. I know it's not the choice that everyone would have made, but it's the choice I made, and I still stand by it. So before she was euthanized, um, I was able to go back to the vet and visit her, and I brought Nova with me, so... We both went to say goodbye to her, and we were both there when she uh, passed away. And it was hard. It still is hard. Uh, Luna was my very first ferret, and I got her five years ago. And she created this passion that I have, and she's the reason I ended up getting more ferrets, and I fell so in love with them, and I started my YouTube channel and my business, and I really just owe, like, everything to her. And she's my first ferret that I've ever had to say goodbye to. And it's not an easy thing to say goodbye. So the last memory I have of Luna is her at the vet just so tired of fighting and so ready to 
stop trying. And that's just not Luna. Like, that's not her at all. Instead of letting that take up my consciousness, I spent the last week editing this video. As hard and as heartbreaking and as painful as it was to sometimes see her just so full of life and so perfectly fine, like nothing is nothing is wrong, because that's how ferrets go. They go from they go so quickly. So to see her just so happy and with her sisters and just having such a good time, it's it hurt a lot and I cried a lot while I was editing this video. But I think it also really helped because I was able to turn the last memory I have of her in the vet, not herself. And I'm able to turn that into something else because now the last memory that I have of her, which is more prominent, is this last day that I got to spend with her, not knowing it was the last day that I was going to spend with her. I just, yeah, I miss her a lot. But I have this day to remember, and I'm always going to remember this day. So now you guys get to see it too. Okay, I hope you like the video. Uh, bye. Hello there, friendly neighbors. And welcome back to my channel. None of my ferrets are awake right now, and I'm super excited about that because we're about to get really noisy, and they're probably all going to wake up, and it's going to be a mess because I'm going to have to put them back in their cage because they're not allowed to be around the tools we're going to be using for this video. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Kenya is using tools again. Dig boxes. Dig boxes. Dig boxes are... Great. They're super good for ferrets. They're amazing enrichment. I talk about them in my top 10 ferret toys video. Go check that out if you haven't watched it. Talk about why they're good. So just watch that video if you want to know why. Because I'm not going to go through it again. That's a waste of time right now. I've already said these things. Today I'm making my ferrets a dig box. I did have a dig box for them before. Lyra loves it. She's been really mad that I got rid of the other one. But I moved super suddenly and there were certain things that I had to just yeet out of my life because I physically couldn't take them with me. That was one of the things. So I'm making it up to them. Okay, we're going with another dig box. It's gonna be an amazing time. I'm sure they're gonna just love it. Well, I know Lyra is. Elara isn't, she hated the dig box, but it's not always the Elara show, okay? I think I talk about this in my top 10 ferret toys video, talk about what you can use to put into a dig box, but I have since found other items that you can put into a dig box that I didn't know you could use back then, so I'm gonna go through them again. This is a really long way to say you're about to see a list on the screen. So let's do that. The most common thing that you can use in your dig box is rice. People use rice all the time. It's really great. Lots of ferrets really love it. My ferrets don't. We'll talk about that in a second. If you're going to be using rice, just make sure you're using non-instant whole grain rice. Just go to Walmart. You can find it in a tub. It's going to be great. Other food items that you can use are uncooked beans, just like the little kidney beans. You can find them at Walmart. I believe in you. And you can also use pasta, like little macaro macaroni. What? Little macaroni noodles. I said it right that time. Little macaroni noodles and stuff like that are great because they're just small and they dig. You know, they dig. Sometimes you dig. You dig? That was stupid. Don't say that in this video. If you are going to use food, just make sure that your ferrets aren't the type of ferrets that are going to eat it. If you see your ferret eating the rice, that's your sign that you're like, yeah, let's uh eat this bad boy to the curb because we don't want that. Another thing to keep in mind if you are using food items is to make sure that they aren't, you know, growing mold in, in them. I've never done that. That didn't ever happen to me. Back when I had rice in my dig box, um, my apartment, I think it was just like too humid or something because mold just started growing in it and I didn't notice. Oh. And then uh, Luna would sleep in the dig box and she got an upper respiratory infection. This is really bad. Learn from my mistakes. I got her to the vet like ASAP and it cleared up super easily in like three days with some antibiotics. If you're using food, just check it a lot. If there's mold and if you live somewhere humid, just don't do food. Let's go through the other things you can use that aren't food. Organic dirt. So long as it's something that is organic and free of fertilizers and pesticides, you're golden. I have lots of friends who use dirt and their ferrets really like it. Coconut fiber. That's what I'm using today. I love using coconut fiber. Coconut fiber is really similar to dirt in the sense that it's like that dirt 
it's I don't think it it's actually dirt, but I it seems like dirt. But what I like about it is that if you get the same brand that I got or a similar brand, it's specifically for pets, so you know that it's organic and it doesn't have any of the harmful stuff in it that you don't want that might be in dirt. So that's why I like coconut fiber. Sand. Just don't use play sand, okay? Play sand that you can buy at hardware stores is got quartz in it, or it's made of quartz. Something about quartz. Quartz is just really bad for respiratory systems. When your ferrets are breathing it in, they that they they're gone. Poisoned. They're gonna poisoned. So don't use play sand. If you're using sand, just make sure once again that it's just organic, actual sand with no pesticides or anything added to it. If it's been treated, make sure that the only way it's been treated is just by being cooked or brought to a high temperature. I honestly haven't been able to ever find sand that falls into that category, but hypothetically, you could use sand. Shredded paper. It's a really good one because, especially around Easter, you can find a lot of it everywhere because people put it in their Easter baskets. Don't use plastic. In my opinion, I don't think plastic is safe because paper tears, but plastic doesn't really do that as much, so you don't want to risk your ferret getting their limbs tangled in it or something and then being unable to tear it. So stick with paper if you're gonna do shredded something. Ping pong balls, okay? If you can sacrifice money and get like 500 ping pong balls, oh my God, Lyra would literally throw a party. You can also get, um, what was I talking about? You can also get ball pit balls. My ferrets don't really like those because they are they can like bite into them really easily and then they just start chewing them. So I prefer ping pong balls because they're hard. Uh, basically anything you can put in a dig box so long as it's something that doesn't have any harmful chemicals in it. Not something that they're gonna eat and maybe get a blockage from or just that they shouldn't be eating. You can get creative with it. I'm sure there are other things that you could use. Get creative with it. Have fun, let your ferrets have fun. I just want some safety warnings before I get started because I don't want anyone's ferrets to get hurt. So let's talk about the safety warnings when it comes to dig boxes. First one, make sure your ferrets are supervised when they're playing in the dig box. I know it's tempting to just leave it and then walk away, but you really don't know what's gonna happen. They could just do that thing that ferrets do where one second they're fine and the next second they're like dying because that's just what ferrets like to do. So supervise your ferrets when they're playing in the dig box. The second thing is just if they are eating whatever you are using in the dig box, just get rid of that thing. Don't try it again. It's not worth it. Y you found out that that's not an appropriate material for your ferrets, okay? We don't do the thing that they're eating. And like I said earlier, if it is something like a food item, make sure it's, you're checking it for mold. We don't need a respiratory infection situation to happen to you as well. I've already been through it. I can be the one person who went through it. No one else needs to. I think ventilation is really important with dig boxes. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I'm adding proper ventilation into my dig box. A lot of people like to do the tube thing, putting tube into their dig box, which we are going to be doing. Just that single tube is not enough ventilation. Your ferret's not getting enough air in there. So either take the lid of the bin or box or whatever you're using off or do what I'm about to do and you'll see. And the last thing, it's not really a safety thing, but it's just something that I would recommend doing. So I'm gonna put it in this section is, I think it's best to like limit the use that your ferrets have to your dig box. Ferrets become bored of the same things over and over again. So I think it's a good idea that your dig box is something that your ferrets only use maybe a couple times a week or for like a little section of every day, just so that they're not bored of it and it still, you know, stays exciting. Cause you don't want them to get bored of their toys, okay? It's fun when they like their toys. So I'm through the talky talky part. I'm let's go over let's go over to my floor. We're gonna get this thing together. I'm gonna show you all the fun stuff that I bought. And once we're done that, my favorites are gonna have a dig box again. And Lyra is once again going to like me, and we're not gonna have to go to bed crying every single night. Hello there, we're back and we are on my floor. My ferrets are in their cage. I don't need them getting into the things that we're working with and they'll get to play with them when we're done, okay? Patience is a virtue, even to little ferrets. Let's go through what I got today. When you're making a dig box, really the only thing you need is a bucket and something to put into the bucket. But I have more things than that because my ferrets be fancy. First off, we have the bucket. I, I got this at Home Depot and it's a nice size and it was $25, so I was happy. I have a tube, once again, purchased from Home Depot. Once again, $25. Actually, I think it was 17. I can't remember, I bought it three years ago. I got some chicken wire. I have this thing. You'll figure out what it is later. I got duct tape, always important. Sandpaper, like regular paper, but sand. A single Sharpie, which is almost out of ink, but hopefully it gets us there. Something to cut things with. Something else to cut things with. Something else to cut things with. A couple of ping pong balls and an Easter egg. Because why not? This one has a happy face on it.
I wish I was that happy. And then of course I have my material to put in my dig box. Like I said earlier, I am using coconut fiber. So I use the Eco Earth coconut husk fiber. I think it's Eco Earth. I don't know, I'll put a picture of it up. So I uh, actually rehydrated it last night because it takes a little while and I didn't want to have to do it today. So it's in this bucket. It's a bucket of dirt and it smells really good. I love the smell of coconut fiber. It just smells like dirt, you know? <sighs> I'm so in touch with nature. I just follow the instructions on the pack in order to rehydrate that. If you use coconut fiber, just follow the instructions on the pack. If I can do it, quite literally anyone else can. Now let's start this wonderful project off. I'm gonna take the sticker off of here first. That's the first step. Take off the sticker and be really upset when it doesn't peel off nicely because apparently we can't have nice things. This is the worst day of my life. I wanna have this too right in there. And then I wanna have it kind of like go along the side here and then, and then kind of like come out there. So it's like a nice gradual run into the dig box. So I need to cut a hole for this tube so that it can do that. Um, that's where my Sharpie comes in. And I'm scared I'm gonna cut it too, too big or too small, but that's gonna be something I have to fix later. I need to hold this steady. Oh, this is super exact. I'm gonna be using my handy dandy Dremel to cut the plastic, because I just can't think of anything else that's actually gonna be able to cut the plastic. So yeah, you guys get to see me do that. Noise. That's what I'm saying. I'll tell you why. Why? I'm trying to give you nice things. Oh, okay. Let's, uh, let's get this in there. It's, it's fine. It's what fine. is that? I love you. It's fine. Are you hurting my tube? I should probably tape this. What is mom doing? I DK but she is my tube. I will get it back. Get it back. Get it back. There, we got the duct tape on. That took me way longer than it really should have. I gotta measure this tube too, because I want it to come out there. Is that good? Are we satisfied? Are we satisfied? Look at them watching me. They want to know what's going on. You'll know soon enough. I love you both. I love you too, Mom. There we go. We got it. We did a thing, boys. Now they can go in here and they can get in. Isn't that magical? Now I talked in the intro to this video about ventilation. There's a sticker on here. I'm going to try and get it off and it's probably not going to work and I'm going to be enraged. But I'll keep talking to you guys as I try. So if I just put a lid on this, that would not be enough ventilation for my sweet baby angels. I chipped my nail on you and now I'm furious. But the problem is they're gonna get dirt everywhere. You know, like that's the, that's the issue with big boxes. I'm gonna have dirt all over my floor, but I wanna limit it as much as possible. So instead of just putting the lid on and then ventilation is an issue, I'm gonna cut a hole out of the top and then I'm gonna cover it in some chicken wire so that the only access they have is still through the tube here. Um, and then, yeah, ventilation. That's gonna solve that problem. I want there to still be enough of an edge that the dirt isn't gonna get completely everywhere. Do you think I will be able to play with my tube again soon? IDK mom will let us out eventually. But when? I'm not sure. Time is an illusion that we made up in order to foolishly attempt to keep track of the mess that is life. But that's the thing about life. When you think about it, it's impossible to keep track of. There will always be fleeting moments that pass by that are taken for granted, and only when they're gone for good will you look back and wish you hadn't let them pass so quickly. We spend our lives waiting for the next thing, but maybe life isn't meant to be spent waiting. Instead we need to enjoy the moments we are currently in. Even if these moments are hard or bad, we can't rush for them to come to an end because it's the bad times that help us grow into who we are meant to be as beings. Life is full of messy bits, which makes them impossible to avoid. 
So to rush or force these times to come to an end means rushing through your entire existence. If you live in the moment, and stop rushing to the next thing, you'll be able to find tiny happinesses wherever you go. K. That's how big the hole's gonna be. I don't know if that's showing up on camera. And if it's not, well, you'll see it when it's actually a hole. Look, it cut that sticker off. I cut a hole. In hindsight, I probably should have put the tube in after I cut the hole, because now I have to clean all this garbage out here, but when have I ever used hindsight? I did it. Nice, now let's clean all the crud out of here. Now I need to cut out a nice little square of chicken wire and hopefully not cut myself too much because every time I've ever used chicken wire, I just cut myself so much because she's pointy. Oh, it's so pointy. I'm already hurting myself. Ouch. Now we're just gonna duct tape that onto the top because that's how we attach things fancy like so that they aren't sharp anymore. I did it. It might not look fantastic, but it sure looks like something. Now the moment of truth has come. I'm gonna put the dirt in this. Oh, wait, let me, let me do something a little, let me do something a little smart. There we go. There we go. I'm thinking ahead here. Now I've got these ping pong balls to put in here because they're gonna love that. The last thing I have for this dig box is I have this little tube thing that fits onto this tube, hopefully. I never, I haven't actually tested it yet. And the reason I have this is so that, like I said at the beginning of the video, limited access is good for dig boxes so they don't get bored of them. So this way, when I don't want my ferrets in the dig box, I can hopefully close it. It worked. So now they can't get into it. Um, but of course, right now, we're, we want them to get into it. I think Andromeda knows what's up and she's very eager, so I'm gonna grab them and see how they feel about the dig box. For right now, I'm not gonna put the lid on it and there's probably just gonna get dirt everywhere, but sometimes you gotta let your ferrets get a little messy to have a good time. What is this? Oh, I know what this is. Wait, I know what this is. It is my balls. It is my dirt. It is my tube. I do not want to be in here right now mother. Up uh, please. Psych I change my mind. I will create the perfect zen garden. Just kidding I will dig pointless holes with Luna. Are you having fun, baby sister? Of course. Oh God, what is this? No, please stop, I hate it. Oh God, Luna is trapped. Don't worry, I will save you.
thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I think that at least Lyra is having a good time and she's happy to be reunited with her dig box like she deserves. Well, hello Luna, are you having a good time too? My new business boxes are up on my Etsy page. They're slumber party themed this month. So make sure you go check those out. Limited supplies as per usual. So don't wait until they sell out because then they're sold out and you can't get one. That's, that's how it works. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because by doing all those things, you too can become a citizen of the friendly neighborhood. I will see you guys next week when I do something. I'm not quite sure what yet. I don't plan that far ahead. Goodbye. Oh, Luna says goodbye too. That's what that sneeze was. Trust me, I speak ferret. <laughs> Bye.